Hi, today I am going to be showing you how to build an APA style template in Microsoft Word. You can use this template to construct all of your future documents that are made in APA style, so you don't have to restyle them every time. You may occasionally, if you've looked, see other templates but uh, what I'm going to show you really takes advantage of Microsoft Word's built-in features to guarantee you're not going to have to be shifting text around, uh, trying to add extra spaces by hitting enter, all that kind of stuff. We're going to instead style our document from the ground up in such a way that it will be elegant, it will lead to a smaller file, and it will be much easier to edit. So I'm going to Go ahead and share my screen and we'll go ahead and get started. Now you should be able to see that I have Microsoft Word open here already. What I really recommend that you do <clears throat> is uh, follow along. You might want to pause this video from time to time so that you can uh, keep up with me and do what I am suggesting here. We're going to start out by just typing a series of text onto our document that's going to form the basis of our template, and then we're going to go through and style all of that text. So I'm going to start by just typing title, name, department, university, class, professor, date, title, Title again, body text, this is going to be kind of a placeholder, body text without indentation. This can have multiple purposes, perhaps most especially uh, if your document needs an abstract. What I'm showing you here today is a specifically a student style paper. Uh, APA style has some slightly different formatting for a professional paper and APA style paper. Uh, what we're building today can be used for both, but it's a, it's a student style paper that we're going to be making. I'm going to just put in heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four. Let's put that a little bit there. Putting a period at the end of heading four. And heading five, put a period at the end of that one too. Uh, actually, let's add a few things there. After heading four, I'm gonna add some body text. After heading five, I'm gonna do the same thing, some body text. We'll come back around to why I'm doing that in a little bit when we get to styling these. Then I'm gonna put in a block quotation. Uh, block quotations are any quoted material from another source that is 40 words or longer. Ordinarily, you would put those in quotation marks with, of course, a citation. But if it's 40 words or more, it's a block quotation, which is in its own paragraph and styled a little bit differently uh, from the rest of your text. So put that in there. Then at the end of your paper should always be a page for your references. And then I'm just going to put bibliographic entry so we can style what those, oops. Bibliographic entries uh, should look like. Now we're going to go back through our text and we're going to style all these different uh, textual elements that we've made placeholders for. The first thing you always want to style first is this style that is called normal. You'll see the styles pane up here in Microsoft Word. This is a pane that typically tends to get ignored. Uh, because people see this font pane over here, they say, well, I need my text bold, so I'm going to put it in bold, or I need it in italics or whatever. Or look here, I can change the font. If you do that, you're not really altering the structure of the document itself. And that's why sometimes in your Word documents, you might get weird artifacts that are frustrating. Like if you change your font to Times New Roman, and then you try to go back, uh, maybe backspace at one point, or you put a new paragraph, and suddenly it reverts to this Calibri, which is Word's default font for some reason, even though nobody uses Calibri. Um, the reason it's reverting to that is because that style is still buried in there in the code of the document. And so Word is always going to try to fight you on things like that and try to revert to its default styles. That's why instead of just altering the font, it's a really good idea to start any new document by actually editing the styles themselves. Or instead of doing that every single time, 
have a template that you can open that you've already styled so you never have to mess with it again. Now, what we're about to do, you're going to think is a little bit time consuming and it kind of is, unfortunately. But the great thing about this is once you've done it, you never have to do it again, at least for this style of document. Once we've done this and you've saved it to your computer, you will have an APA template that you can open. All the styling is there. You never need to think again about what that styling is supposed to look like. So up here in the styles pane, we are going to find normal and we are gonna right click on it. So we bring up this little menu and we're gonna hit modify. That's gonna bring up this menu. Now you'll see that um, I've, I've already edited the defaults in my particular version of Microsoft Word. Yours will probably say Calibri here. Go ahead and let's choose Times New Roman. The APA manual does not give a specific font that you have to use in your template, but Times New Roman tends to be a crowd pleaser. You're unlikely to have a professor who's going to be annoyed at your paper if you turn it in uh, printed in Times New Roman. Go ahead and choose that. Choose size 12. Then come down to this format button, and that'll bring up a drop down, and we need to format the paragraph. We want a special indentation of 0.5 for the first line. Um, that special indentation, what that means is our paragraphs are going to be indented half an inch. Uh, most anywhere you see where like say publication standards of journals or anywhere else you might possibly want to publish with, they're always going to tell you to do this rather than to hit the tab key. Um, I'm not quite sure of the reason for that, but this is a good habit to get into to have your paragraphs automatically indent instead of doing it manually. We want spacing before and after to be zero. Yours might say nine point after, I think is the default. Take that out, zero, and line spacing double. Once we've done that, um, once we've done that, your text should come out looking like this. Again, I've manually altered mine to, uh, to be the Calibri, to look like the default style that you're seeing in, in yours. So don't worry uh, that uh, your document at this point looks a little different from mine. What you will have had happen here is that all of these uh, down the line are going to alter themselves to look like this. The reason that is happening is because normal is the default style. Everything else in your document is gonna be based on normal. And that's why you always wanna edit normal first. Because if you edit normal and then go in and try to alter the other styles, um, if, if you alter the other styles first and then come back and try to alter normal, it's going to also alter all your other styles as well. And that can be very frustrating. So always get normal the way you want first, and then everything else will build off of that. Now we're going to come up here to title. And down here, there is a title style already. You're going to select that, modify it. Now, everything we're going to do is going to be Times New Roman size 12, and pretty much everything is going to be double space too. So we can set all of that. So Times New Roman 12, in this case, we also want it centered. Uh, sorry, there's the option right there. We want this centered in the center of the page. And come to the paragraph tab, and we're going to do something a little special here. First of all, take off the special indentation. It should say none there, but also before set this to 96 point, 96 space PT, and this one type in 24 space PT. And the reason we're doing that, well, you'll see the reason why in just a second. So the reason we're doing that is it's gonna come out looking like this. This is what you want your, where you want your title to be positioned on your title page. Uh, now, Others might give you instruction to just hit enter until you get down to this spot. That's kind of a sloppy way to use Word. It's a sloppy way to use a word processor. A word processor is not a typewriter. So you should always seek to uh, position things using styles, using uh, above and below spacing, the automatic double spacing, all those kinds of things instead of hitting the enter key and, and adding invisible lines into your document. Now, all of these right here, name, department, university, class, professor, and date, all of these things are um, categories that belong on the first page of a student paper. You can look in the APA manual 
and you can see an example of a student paper and it will show you how this is laid out on the page. Now, again, we have all these default styles that already exist in Word. I want you to find this one called subtitle. We are going to alter this to uh, resemble again what the document wants for the things on that first page. Now you're going to have a goofy color over here. I believe it's a light gray or maybe blue. Change that to automatic. Again, everything is Times New Roman. Everything is 0.12. We want it centered again. And let's see, format, paragraph. You want spacing before should be zero and zero. Again, no special indentation, so alter that. Line spacing should be double for basically everything. Um, so we already said center, but now I need you to come over. Uh, no, wait, sorry. Yeah, everything in there like we've set up uh, basically before, double space, zero after. Hit OK, but now I need you to come over to the format menu again, come down to font, and you want to look at the advanced tab you're going to have some goofy spacing in here. I don't remember exactly what the default is, but it's gonna be expanded by a certain amount. Take that off, just change it to normal. And, and the rest of this should say 100% and normal default and all that as well. Once that is done, that basically reverts the font to being normal looking like the rest of your document. Once that is done, you should have that. And you see now we have the beginnings of a proper title page. Now, the, the next part of our document is going to be the title of the, of the paper again, which is going to form the heading of our first section. We're going to skip that for the moment. Instead, we're going to come down here to, actually, let's edit this first. I mentioned body text without indentation. Uh, you're going to want to create a new style for this. See this little button hidden down in the corner of the styles pane? Click on that, and you're going to see, I'm going to move my picture here so everything's more visible. You're going to get this drop-down menu that's going to show you all the styles that are currently being used in your document. There are these three buttons at the bottom. The middle one is called Style Inspector. I've never found very much use for that. Uh, you can play with it if you like to, maybe you'll find it handy. I basically never use the Style Inspector. But there are two very important buttons down here. One is this first one, which is New Style, and the second is this one called Manage Styles. Right now we're gonna click on New Style. So give that a click, and you'll see here, you can give it a name, and we are going to call this no indent like that. You can give it a different name if you like, but this is what I like to call it. Now, what we're going to do here, uh, style based on normal, you can also set, okay, I already have it built in mind. So we're going to set, use this as a, <laughs> we're going to use this as an example. You don't already, I know, you don't already have it set in yours. So I'm going to, I'm going to change the name here just so it stops giving me that message. Um, so Times New Roman 12, uh, left justified, that style is based on normal. Come on, man. There we go. So the style is based on normal. You can also set it uh, style for the following paragraph. That means when you hit the enter key, it's going to revert to normal. Uh, you can, whichever your preference is, you can have it revert to normal or you can have it stay in the style until you manually tell it to switch to something else. I'm gonna tell it to revert to normal. I think, I think that will be most commonly what we'll do. Come over to format, paragraph, and uh, for the special indentation, change it from the first line 0.5 to none. Ass and uh, also, yeah, take off space any spacing after it there shouldn't be any of that anymore because what you're going to see is based on normal but we want it basically to be like our normal font except uh, we want it without the first without the indentation there are a few different potential uses for this um, making captions for figures if you have any figures in your document is one reason you might want text without an indentation uh, another is if you are writing a paper that requires an abstract, we're not uh, setting up an abstract in this particular um, template, 
uh, because because abstracts are not uh, required according to the manual in student papers. If you have a professor who asks for an abstract, though, an abstract is not supposed to be indented the same way regular paragraphs are. And so I recommend uh, setting up a style with no indentation because uh, there can be a number of potential uses for it. It's good to have there in your template. Um, you go ahead and hit OK to save yours. I'm going to cancel mine because I already have it set up in my uh, in my defaults. <clears throat> so we'll have body text without indentation. Where's no indent? It tells me I already have it in there and it doesn't show it to me. There we are. So we'll have body text without any indentation in it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our headings. I told you to go ahead and skip this title. There's a reason for that. And uh, we're going to learn now what that reason is. Now, there are five uh, levels of heading that are defined uh, in the manual. We're going to set up all of our headings to resemble those styles. Again, everything's going to be Times New Roman. Everything is going to be double spaced. Uh, something else I should add is that just kind of like the title up here, um, APA 7, for whatever reason, really likes bold text for headings. So all of these are going to be bold. Now, there is already a heading style set up in your document. You're going to see there is a heading one up here. We're going to alter it. Now, you want it centered. You want it bold, Times New Roman 12. Also, under Format, you're going to have to come down to this Paragraph tab, and you're going to have to, again, take off this special indentation. Um, if, you're, if that indentation is still there, even though you have it set to be centered, it's going to be off a little bit. It's going to be off center by a half an inch. These line and page breaks, we'll come back to these later. These should automatically be set in your headings uh, as keep lines together, keep with next. We want those settings. They should already be in there. You'll see them up on this tab. And uh, that, that should do it. So that when that's set to heading one, that should look like that. Heading two is almost identical, except it's left justified. So modify heading two. Um, again, under paragraph, you need to take off the special indentation. Uh, pretty much everything else is the same except left justified instead of centered. Heading two will look like that. Heading three is just like heading two except it's italic. So set up heading two, modify, format, paragraph, take off the special indentation. Okay, there. Hit the italics on it to make sure it's italicized. And there it is, it will look like that. Now heading four and heading five, you're unlikely to use them very often, but nonetheless, we're gonna style them anyway. If your document does has, have as many as five levels of headings, you, you should probably consider um, modifying the structure of your document. It's, it's very likely that your document structure is more complex than it needs to be, that you probably have more headings than you actually need to use. Uh, I do encourage you use headings in your papers. It will make them much clearer. It'll make them much easier to read. Uh, and for reasons I'm going to show you in a moment, it also makes your paper easier to navigate for you while you're, while you're editing it. But heading four, unlike the headings we previously just modified, actually has this 0.5 indent. So you do want that first line indentation by half an inch. Uh, there should be no spacing before. That's an error I have in mind. We're going to fix it. Um, line and page breaks. Come over to this line and page breaks tab and take off keep with next. Take off keep lines together. And I'll explain why in a moment. Let's see. We want all of that. And... Um, should be good. So there's heading four. Now the body text that comes after it on in your document should say it's a normal. Um, so we've got that body text there that's a normal. Let's edit heading five. Heading five is just like heading four, except again, it's in italics. All right. So 
Let's see, find heading five and choose modify. Times in Roman 12, bold italics, format paragraph, indents and spacing. You want no spacing before or after. First line is indented by half an inch. Line and page breaks. Take off, keep with next. Take off, keep lines together. I'm going to set those just for mine. You don't need to worry about those options. Um, so when you're done, it should look like that. Now, why did I put a little body text after each of these headings? Um, for headings four and five, they're actually supposed to be in the same line as the paragraph that comes after. So you would say heading four here like this, and then you would continue writing your paragraph after that. Now, Microsoft Word is not really set up in such a way uh, to allow you to have a heading and body text on the same line. Word doesn't like that. However, there is an obscure command hidden in Microsoft Word that will allow you to place body text on the same line as a heading. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's select heading four and the text that comes after. Then come up to the tab labeled view. See that view? And then come over to this button that says macros. Press macros. <clears throat> And what we're gonna type up here on the macro name bar, we're going to type in insert style separator. And if you spell that correctly, you see this is written in camel case. Camel case means uh, each word is capitalized, but there's no space in between them. Insert style separator with capitalization, but no spaces like that. If you type it in correctly, you'll see it brings up a description. Joins two paragraphs together, creating leading emphasis. Run it, and there you go. Heading four and heading five, heading four, and the body text that follows after now in the same line. We're going to do the same thing with heading five and the text that comes after it. Click macros, insert style separator. Run it, and there it goes. Now, do you want to have to remember that? Probably not. So what I recommend doing, if you come over here and look at my insert menu, you'll see I've got this custom box all the way in the end and I've got the style separator in it, as well as this other handy option called format frame that I'll talk about a little later. Um, you can add this yourself to the ribbon. Come over to file bring it down to options and let's see see the button that says customize ribbon select that then under popular commands because what we're looking for isn't popular it's obscure select all commands then <clears throat> over here on your ribbon come down to insert select that and you need to create a new group Select new group. It should, it should, when you do that, add a new group underneath insert. You can rename that. I've just called mine custom. See it right there. So new group, and it should create the group. Then you can click rename to rename it. And come over here, and I believe, I don't remember if it has insert before it or not. I believe it is... Yeah, these are alphabetical, but that sometimes doesn't help. I believe it is down here under style separator. So it's under the S's um, style. Come on now. Why are there several things called styles? Um, there it is, style separator. So you can select that and click add. You'll see mine doesn't have an add option because I've already added it. But you can add it. There it'll go. And um, you can have that then as an option so you don't have to remember uh, what it's called and to run the macro every time you want to do that. So click OK. I'm going to click X, but you click OK, and that should appear on your ribbon. All right, a few things left. Block quotation. Back over on the Home tab, you will see that there is already 
a quote style. We're going to modify it. I believe it has a weird color, so set it to automatic. Set it to left justify because I think it's centered. Times New Roman, 12, format paragraph. Um, I think it has some weird spacing, so set it to zero before, zero after, double line spacing. Also, we don't want special indentation. We want none on the indentation that is on the special indentation. But over here on the left indentation, we want half an inch. What that's going to do is if we have a block quote, the entirety of the block quote will be indented half an inch, not just the first line. Now, something else I recommend doing, see this tabs button down here, click on that and type in one inch left. This can be none and just okay. And then okay on that. And now on a quote style, what we've got is now a block quotation. If you need to create a block quotation, you can just select quote out of the menu, uh, type out you know, the text. Now, if a block quotation goes to more than one paragraph, it uh, the, all the preceding paragraphs are supposed to have a full indentation of uh, a leading indentation of an additional half inch. So let's say, you know, block quotation, I am a block quotation. Love you, block quotation. And then I look at my source and I say, oh, the next uh, text starts on a new paragraph. Um, let's make sure, again, quote. Then I hit tab. And so I will start a, this is the second paragraph of the block quotation. So uh, I do strongly recommend that most of the time you really should not quote as many of two, as two paragraphs <clears throat> from another source. Uh, if you find yourself doing that, consider whether you can uh, quote less material or consider possibly uh, a paraphrase or rewording. But nonetheless, if you do quote something that covers more than one paragraph, have that additional uh, half, inch, half inch indentation. I added the tab stop uh, just as a reminder of that uh, to get that additional indentation. My uh, keyboard stopped working. To get that additional indentation, I actually just hit the tab key. Uh, there's there's no way to make that automatically indent for us just <clears throat> just using the quote style because the first paragraph of your block quotation is not supposed to have that full inch uh, leading indentation. It's only supposed to start uh, a half inch in. Now, you'll see on here we have title and references, which we both haven't styled yet. So I'm going to select title. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new kind of style. So we're going to come down here to the new style button and name it section label. I'm, I'm adding a two to mine because I already have a section label in here, but you just call it section label. I'm calling it a section label because that's what the APA manual calls it. That's what it calls these particular types of headings. And under style based on, drop down that menu and change it from normal to heading one. We want it to be identical to heading one. Style for the following paragraph should be normal like that. <clears throat> so we want it uh, section label. It's a paragraph style, style type. It's based on heading one. Following text should be normal. So again, we're going to set Times New Roman. It's going to be 12. It's going to be bold. It's going to be centered. <clears throat> then under format paragraph, <clears throat> come over. Um, yeah, make sure there's no spacing after anything else funny. Uh, special, this should already have none, but in case it doesn't, select none, no special indentations. Then under line and page breaks, select page break before. So, okay. 
Now I'm going to cancel this because I already have a special label style, but you hit OK instead. And after you do that, what you should get, hold on a second. I think I accidentally created two of them. You know, I'll fix that later. What you should get is your title of your paper starting on the second page. And you should get this nice title page for your first page. Same thing for references, set that as a section label. Now it's on a separate page where it belongs. Now that we've done that, we're going to style our bibliographic entries. Again, this should be based on normal. Um, we're gonna create a new style again. So come down to new style. I'm going to call it bibliographic entry. Should be based on normal. Style for the following paragraph should also be bibliographic entry because you're not going to have any more normal text following it. Should be Times New Roman, size 12. Uh, for the paragraph, we want no before or after, should be double spaced. And now for the special, change this from first line to hanging, should be a hanging indent of 0.5. Click OK, click OK, and there it is. If you type out a full bibliographic entry, it will give us the hanging indent that bibliographic entries are supposed to have. Now, one thing that is left is to style our running head. Uh, just at the top of the first page, like up right about here, just double click, and that will bring you up your header. Now, there's already uh, a heading style in here. What we're going to do is in this drop down, click Manage Styles. It should already have header selected. Click this Modify button. Now for the header, I'm going to change the name of this to running head because that's again that's what the APA manual calls it. Uh, that's optional. You don't necessarily have to uh, do that. Um, running head, we want it left justified, Times New Roman, size 12. Come under paragraph, uh, turn off the first line indentation. We want no indentation, no before or after. But something else I'm going to do, hit OK there. Under Format, come down to Font. And under the regular Font tab, select All Caps. Now, the reason we're doing that is because um, if you do write a professional paper for any reason, if, you're, if your uh, professor requires it, uh, the running head in your document is supposed to be in all caps. Uh, putting that on, uh, uh, selecting all caps here means it will have to be in all caps. It will be impossible to forget that your running head is supposed to be in all caps because you won't be able to type anything else up there. So we'll hit OK on that. Hit OK. There we go. Now, uh, you'll see up on my ruler here, there's two tab stops. These are automatically inserted by Microsoft Word. Uh, if we needed a running head, um, it would it would be a located on the left side. Now I'm going to backspace out of that because we don't need one for our student paper. But just hit the tab key twice. Let's see, first it brings you to the center, then it brings you to the right. Uh, this is where your page number is supposed to go. So go up to the Insert tab. And under here somewhere is Page Number. There it is. Select Page Number. And we just want it in the current position where we are right now. And we just want a plain number, nothing fancy. And there it is. And double click out of there. Now every page of this document will have a properly located page number. Again, we never have to worry about it from that point forward, it is where it belongs. 
So at this point, we do have a properly formatted a student paper. Most everything you need for a student paper uh, is in here. Uh, the only thing we haven't talked about is how to do headings and titles on say figures or tables. I'm not gonna go over that right now. Um, you can use these same techniques. You can build new styles for those if you happen to need them. In most of your student papers, you're probably not going to have figures, uh, which is why I'm not going to go over this at that time, go over that at this time. I do, however, want to show you one additional neat trick. And that has to do with, um, again, it's not something necessary for student paper but it is something that is needed in professional paper. And that's an author note that goes on the first page. Underneath date here, I'm just gonna type in author note. And uh, the top of the author note should be a heading one. And underneath that should just be normal style. And uh, notes would include things like conflict of interest, uh, if any of the authors have joined a different institution, uh, those are the kind of things that get declared in author's note. You may at some point be asked to write a paper in professional style, in which case you would need an author's note. So I'm going to show you another neat trick to put the author's note where it's supposed to be. Now, the author's note is supposed to be attached to the bottom of the page. Um, Microsoft Word really does not like you to put text at the bottom of the page if you already have text that is, you know, anchored normally to the top, like, like all of this information is up here. Now, most people to get it down to the page, at the bottom of the page, they probably hit enter a bunch until it comes down here. But then you find you need to expand your note, and so it's going to dump onto the next page, and then you have to hit backspace. Um, our whole idea of building this template is to avoid issues like that. And so I'm going to show you another obscure but very handy command. Come back over to the View tab under Macros. Type in Insert Frame. Again, it's in Camel Case. And say Insert an Empty Frame or Enclose the Selected Item in a Frame. Now, we've already selected that text, you'll notice. So this will enclose our text in a frame. So there's the frame. Now we can, <clears throat> up on the edge of it here, <clears throat> excuse me, up on the edge of it here, right click with your mouse, come down here to format frame. Position, let's see, vertical position should be zero relative to, I always get this wrong, relative to page, I believe. Um, I think the rest of that is Fine, let's, oops, nope, that was, that was wrong. That was wrong, but we can fix it. Right click again, format frame. I believe it's position bottom relative to margin, I think. There it is, bottom relative to margin. I knew, I knew it was one of those things. Now let's put that on the bottom of the page. Right click again, select borders and shading, and then uh, select the setting none get rid of that border, and there it is. Our author's note is now at the bottom of the page where it belongs. And the great thing is I can fill it uh, with anything I need, and it stays anchored to the bottom of the page where it belongs. I haven't had to hit enter. I don't have to do anything messy. If I type more in here, it's not gonna come down onto my next page. Uh, everything stays where it's supposed to be thanks to that frame. You can add frames to your toolbar the same way we did before. File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and I think it is actually called Insert, oh, let's change it to All Command. I believe it is actually called Insert, Um, it's not, it's, <laughs> they hide these things. I tell you, and look, there's no search. There's no search option. Um, hold on, let me see what it's called for sure. Format frame, wonderful. It's called format frame. Uh, 
They don't make it easy for you. Format frame. So you can, um, fascinating. you can add that to like a custom menu again, so you don't have to uh, remember that. So there it is, there's a frame. Uh, again, for your student paper, you won't need this. So you can just kind of, you can uh, delete that and, um, or, or leave it depending, at, depending on what you want to do with it. But at least for a student paper, an author's note on the first page is not required. So at this point, we have a, a complete uh, template. Now let's not save it as a regular document. Come up to File, come down to Save As, um, select this PC, and it actually doesn't matter what folder you select. I'm just gonna select Desktop for the moment. But now under uh, Save As Type, select that, and come down to Word Template. Then give this a name and you'll see it automatically opens the custom Office Templates folder. That's why it doesn't really matter what you call it. You can give it any name you want. You'll see I already have one created called APA Style Paper. You can call it that, or you can call it APA Format, something to that effect. Hit Save. And after once you've saved it, I'm not going to save mine because again, I already have it. But uh, once you've saved it, then when you come up to new document, next to blank document, you will see the um, template that you've made right there. And so when you know you have an APA style paper that is going to that you're going to be working on, select your template. And once you've selected your template, you'll see all of this. You can alter all these elements to have the correct information, uh, delete out all these unnecessary headings, of course, but then you're, you're good to go. If you need any of those headings, they're right there in your styles pane. You can select them from here uh, to insert the correct type of heading in your document. Now, one additional question, why would you do this instead of just say altering your text over here? Well, in the long run, it's gonna save your time. You don't have to reformat your document every single time you make an APA paper. But the other reason to do this is this is actually building a structure to your document. Your, uh, Microsoft Word actually recognizes these headings. And you'll see over here in my navigation pane, if you don't have that visible, you can bring it up by hitting Control F. Control F will bring up your navigation pane. Select headings, and it will actually show you an outline of your document. Um, once you've done that, and you've put headings throughout your document, you're going to have an outline of all the different sections of your document over here. You can instantly navigate to each of them. It makes it uh, much easier to navigate your paper. Uh, this also has wider implications that, that are probably not going to be uh, immediately relevant to what you're doing, but this has to do with accessibility issues. Like if somebody, um, say with limited vision or who can't use a mouse needs to be able to navigate your document, uh, having that proper structure in there will make that document much, uh, much easier to use. If your professor is going to be going through your Word documents, uh, instead of getting a printed copy, if they're actually going through uh, the Word file itself, uh, your professors may also appreciate having that outline of your document uh, visible and available to them. It makes your document all around look uh, much more professional. Uh, interestingly, although this may not matter very much with the uh, huge amount of storage space most computers have nowadays, it, it actually results in a document file that's much smaller. If you're styling your uh, text by hand up over here, that actually adds a lot of junk code to your document. Whereas if you have the style styled ahead of time, uh, your, the document file itself uh, is much more compact. Um, by properly using styles, headings, uh, you can actually cut your document size by about half uh, sometimes, depending. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, Thank you very much. That is how to build an APA template. And uh, I hope I will see you again for future lessons. Thank you.